This commercial-style building, used as a factory for many years, has Chicago-style influences. Built around 1890, possibly by Frank Tubbesing, this three-story brick building has had many historical owners over the years. In 1887, Isaac Leeson and Company expanded their wholesale dry goods into clothing manufacturing. They opened the Knoxall factory on the fourth floor of the S.J. Leeson building down the street. The business grew, and in 1889, they purchased a building at the corner of 3rd and Vermont. At the time, the Knoxall factory was one of the leading industrial institutions of Quincy and was closely identified with the development of the city for several decades. It gave a steady employment to around 500 people and was considered one of the most cheerful factories in the country. It was credited with being the standard line of its class in America. Later, the building was sold to Tom Mormon, who used it for Mormon's Manufacturing Company for several years. This expanding company focused on livestock feed that Mormon discovered after seeing market improvement in his hogs after feeding them a formula mixed with coffee mill. Along with this, they also manufactured a complete line of support products from the factory. In 1917, Lawrence Yoakum, Emmett Howard, and Otto Volm founded the Quincy Paper Box Company, with Mr. Yoakum eventually becoming sole owner. Originally employing about 30 people, the company outgrew its location on Hampshire Street and moved into this building in 1928 in order to suit the growing business. They needed additional space for a raw materials warehouse, three finished goods warehouses, and a valentine department, which had a floor solely devoted to the heart line. The company's products have changed over the years based on demands, but the original products included were shoe, garment, and candy boxes. Its chief product came to the manufacturing of Valentine Heart candy boxes. Throughout the years in this building, Quincy Paper Box gained national fame for these fancy, heart-shaped boxes for Valentine's Day. They also made other seasonal candy boxes, as well as a large variety of boxes for pharmaceutical, jewelry, gifts, hardware, etc. The company employed over 200 people during peak season, and its boxes were shipped around the country. Early in 1967, the company suffered its first fire loss with extensive damage. Damaged facilities were completely rebuilt, and the company was back in operation in less than two months. The factory was later purchased by the Ward Paper Company in 1976 and became a subsidiary of Russell Stover in 1979. Quincy Paper Box closed in November of 1991. Now, recently, the building has been a controversial topic with the city due to the current owner allowing the building to go into great disrepair. Efforts are in motion to restore the building to better condition. This Historic Quincy Business District podcast was produced by WGEM. Special thanks to the Gardner Denver Museum of Architecture and Design, the Historical Society of Quincy and Adams County, and Quincy Preserves for providing information. For more information, you can visit www.downtownquincy.com or walk to the HQBD office at 128 North 5th Street. I'm WGEM's Rich Kane.